Hello everyone, this is Somaj Jitha. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I have discussed in detail about the entire code of low-level design of library management system. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. In this video, I will be coding the entire solution for the low-level design of library management system. But as a prerequisite, I would say please go and watch my part one video. Uh, that video is necessary to watch this video because in that video I have completely drawn the entire use case diagram that you currently see in the screen in order to understand how I got to this particular use case diagram from the set of requirements that I have. Uh, please go and watch my part one video Although for your reference, I will just quickly show you the requirements that we have had uh, Please feel free to pause the screen and take a detailed look at all the ten requirements that is present here And I have attached uh, in the description below this particular use case diagram so that uh, you have this diagram handy with you so whenever I am uh, referring to this diagram you can quickly take a look at it So let's just jump right into coding the same as I have told in the previous video of low-level design coding of hotel management system, whenever we are you know, starting out any code for low-level design of any kind of system that is given, we should always attack it in such a way that we start out by writing the class for the base system that is present. And once we have the class for the base system, we then one by one start defining all the complex objects that are present in that base system in order to decouple them from the base class as much as possible. After we have decoupled the entire system as much as possible, we then look out for which actors are present for our system that we have derived earlier and we start defining those actors in the best way possible and then start defining all the use cases pertaining to those actors based upon the re relationship between different actors and design the entire system. Now let us start by defining the base class of library management system and you must have guessed by now is the library class. The library class as usual will have obviously the name which will be the name of the library. It will house the location of the library which we are using a complex object here in the name of address to denote the location. Then obviously the library class will have a list of books because that's what library consists of. After that, let us start by defining the first complex object that we encountered while uh, defining our library class, that is uh, the address. So we will have uh, the address class that will contain the pin code or the zip code of the location of library. It will contain the street, city, state, as well as the country. Now let us start and define the book class present here. Uh, before defining the book item class, we will be defining the base book class. The only idea for doing so is because uh, of the requirements that we have. That is, there can be multiple copies of each book and they will be referred to as book items. So let us start by defining the book class, which will be the base class here. The book class will obviously consist of a unique ID number to actually identify that book then it will have a title, it will have a list of authors because obviously a book can be written by many authors uh, together and need not be concentrated to one. Uh, then the book class will always consist of another enum in place which is the book type because the book can be of different types as well and that should be identifiable from the book class itself. Then we will go ahead and close this book class and start by defining the book item class which we have used at most of the places. The book item class as usual will be extending the book class and it will contain a barcode which will be unique to one copy of a book and this barcode will be you know different for different copies of the book that's why it has been kept in the book item class and not in the book class. Then we will have a publication date similar to barcode the publication date might differ from one book uh, copy to another book copy. Hence, we have the publication date inside the book item. Uh, as for the requirement that we have that uh, in library, a particular copy of book will be placed at a particular location and that location is defined by the rack class that we are using here. This is another example of a complex class that we are using in order to decouple responsibility from one class. Uh, because we do not want to keep uh, all the objects, all the data members in one particular class because it will unnecessarily be difficult to make any change without affecting something else. 
so we should always aim at decoupling responsibilities from one class as much as possible it will contain the book status which we are using in enum book status to define it will contain uh, another enum uh, book format which will define which format this particular book is in by format i mean uh, whether the book is hardcover or not whether the book is a paperback or not or whether the book that we are talking about is a journal or a newspaper and so on and so forth then again last but not the least the book item class will also contain um, a date object uh, which will denote the issue date for that particular copy of the book. Now let us go ahead and define uh, the enum that we have come across while defining book and book item. So we start by defining the book type enum. Uh, book type enum it will consist of all the genres of book type that are present in the library for example science fiction romantic fantasy drama etc to name a few. For simplicity I have just included four book types. The next uh, enum that we will be defining is the book format present here as i said the book format enum will actually tell us what is the format of the book whether it is a hardcover whether it is a paperback whether it is a newspaper or journal and uh, then we come to the book status enum which will tell us the actual status of that particular copy of the book or book item that we are speaking here or that we are referring here. All the status that we have defined here is in accordance with what we have to do as per our requirement. Then we go ahead and define the other complex object that we have defined inside the book item class and that is the rack class which will consist of number as well as a location ID. This rack class will be used to identify the exact position of that copy of book inside the library. This is also in accordance with our requirement. If I quickly show you guys the requirement here then you will be able to understand it properly. Here the requirement says each book will have a unique identification number as well as a rack number which will help us to physically locate the book. So whatever we are defining here is in complete accordance to the requirements that we have defined. Now we will go ahead and jump straight into defining the actors. What are the actors that are present here? Namely two major actors are present. One is the customer and the librarian. Server is normal service classes that we will use to send out notifications. So here we will completely focus on creating the customer and the librarian class and all the corresponding functions that they perform. Now we will start by defining our actors as, as we have seen we have two actors in place which is one the customer or the member and the other librarian. There is one more complex object that I have not yet defined and I have not yet defined intentionally is the author. Uh, class and we will be using a proper inheritance to actually define the author, uh, the member as well as uh, the librarian class. So first we will be defining the base class which is the person class here and that person class will contain uh, obviously the first name and the last name and some other uh, identifying information for one particular person which we may want to house inside the person class. Next we will define the author class which will be extending this person class because author is a kind of a person. Hence, author can extend the person class. Uh, author will also contain a list of books which will essentially contain all the books that the author has published. Why we want to store this information inside the author class? We want to store this information inside the author class. It is because this attribute is specific to one particular author as well as it will help us to list down all the books that are specific to one particular author if the user searches by author because that was one of the requirement as well. Now we will go ahead and define the member class as well as the librarian class. Both of them we can club these two classes under the system user class. Why we have not defined author inside the system user class is because author is not using a system. It is merely present inside the system as a metadata in information. Who are the system users in this case? In this case system users are our member as well as librarian. So here uh, as well similar to author the system user class extends the person class because person class is the base class or the parent class and system user class is merely the child class of it. And it will contain some additional information and it will contain some additional information that is required in order to be a system user and they are the email, the phone number as well as the account information. Now we go ahead and define our member class which will be a child class of this system user class because the member will be a system user. We have another additional information that is very specific to member class here which is the total books checked out. We choose to store this particular data point here is because as per our requirements one particular member at a time can only check out a maximum of five books. So we need to maintain this data point per member. How many books a particular member has already checked out and this data point denotes that. Then we also store two other objects inside the member class. They are the search object as well as the book issue service object. Why we choose to store these objects and not define the entire method inside member class is because we can see the search 
as well as the book issue service which will contain renewing of book reserving of book returning of book and issuing of book is actually shared between the customer that is the member as well as the librarian since all these functions are shared between two actors we cannot put the definition of these inside one single actor because it will result in code duplication and we don't want that we will be defining two separate classes for the same similarly we will quickly go ahead and define the librarian class which will again contain these two objects apart from these two objects as we can see the librarian class also has three extra features which is adding of book editing of book and deleting of book so we will quickly go ahead and define the three apis which are required by the librarian class to perform these functions next we go ahead and quickly define the account class the account class that was the part of the system user which will contain the user name the password as well as the unique identifier or the account id so now let us go ahead and define uh, the search class that we will be using inside the member as well as the librarian class for searching different books based upon certain input criteria as defined in our uh, requirements uh, so we have the following four uh, apis defined here all of them return a list of books because we will be searching for books inside the library um, and the methods are get book by title get book by author get book by type and get book by publication date and respectively all the apis will be taking as input uh, the title will take as input the title the author will take as input the author class uh, the book type will take as input uh, the book type enum uh, as well as the uh, get book by publication date will take as input the publication date post which we will start by creating the book issue service that we see here inside the book issue service the object of which should be present is the find service we will be using this find service to calculate any late find that is applicable for any book and we do not want to master that calculation inside book issue service because that is that should not be the responsibility of book issue service apart from that we will start by defining certain apis that are required inside the book issue service the first and foremost get reservation detail this api will give us book reservation detail if we give it a uh, book item as input this this will help us when we try and define the renew as well as uh, the issue functions why uh, because whenever we will try to renew a book we will first see whether or not that particular book has been reserved by anyone and that can be checked by this particular function and if it has been reserved by someone then we will notify that person if it is not reserved by someone then only we will allow the user to renew or issue this particular book similarly we should also have another api which is update reservation detail which will take in as input book reservation detail and will be updating that in the database the other apis are reserve book issue a book renew a book and return a book all these apis will take in as input book item as well as the user who is trying to perform these operations now we will go ahead and quickly define the complex classes that we have introduced here namely the book reservation detail book issue detail as well as the find service class the book reservation detail and the book issue detail as the name suggests will uh, basically contain the reservation related details as well as the issue related details respectively since these two classes are very similar in nature what we will do is we will here again use inheritance we will create a base class book lending class which will contain the common data members and then we will create a uh, uh, we will create uh, the subclasses, the book reservation detail and issue detail, which will contain the specific data members to these classes itself. So the book lending class will contain obviously the book which someone is uh, reserving or someone is issuing. Uh, the date is the date when that reservation or the when that issue took place and the system user which will identify which user is trying to reserve or issue that particular book. Similarly, we will have the book reservation detail class that will be extending the book lending class and will contain the reservation status. The reservation status here is an enum which will actually indicate the status of reservation of that particular book, whether or not that book was successfully reserved, whether or not you are in waitlisting or whether or not it is not at all possible to reserve that book because maximum number of books have been reserved. Then we have the book issue detail class which will also be extending the book lending class and will contain one extra attribute which is the due date. Then we go ahead and define the find service class. The find service class will contain one method which will be the calculate find method which will take in as input a book item on which the find needs to be calculated, the user for which the find needs to be calculated and the number of days that the user has exceeded from the due date present in the book issue detail. Once it processes all these information, calculates the find based upon an algorithm that is present here, it will return a find object. 
and the fine object will contain the date, the book for which the fine was given, the user for which the fine was given and the value of fine that was given. Uh, with this, I come to an end of uh, the entire code for the low level design. I hope that you like my video. In this video, I came up with a robust solution for the low level design of library management system using solar design principles and uh, several OOPS concepts uh, such as inheritance, encapsulation, etc. I hope that I was able to bring value to you guys and you were able to learn something from this video. Please do comment down below if you have any doubt regarding any concept that I have discussed in this particular video. Uh, comment down below what more different kind of videos you would like me to make. I hope that you find my videos good. And if you want to be a part of my mock interview series, I have mentioned my Instagram ID in the description below. Follow me there and message me regarding the same. These mock interviews will be completely free of cost and I'm doing this to give back to the community from which I have gotten so much. That will be it for today guys. This is Soumya Jit bidding goodbye. Das Vidani.